Hello, I'm here today to talk to you about what the septic industry looks at when we're conducting what we call a, a compliance inspection on an existing septic system. Now there are two things that a septic system does. The first is disposal. And what disposal means is that when you run water in your house, you flush your toilet, the water goes away. That's one thing the septic system provides. The second item it provides is treatment. So all the items that come with that sewage we want to remove from that sewage before it hits the groundwater. And that's what we call treatments. We want the sewage to be treated before it's discharged to the environment. Now a compliance inspection of an existing system looks at two things. One is tank integrity. And what we're interested in is whether or not the septic tank is watertight. Now there are several methods that an inspector will use to determine whether or not a tank is watertight. Now imagine the tank here in this picture is cracked. So there's a crack on the bottom of the tank. So the septic tank effluent, rather than leaving the tank and going out into the drain field, it's leaching out the bottom of the tank. Now when that happens, that creates an area underneath the tank that's saturated and when soil is saturated, we're getting no treatment because in order to get treatment, you need oxygen in the soil for the bacteria that's native to the soil to consume the bacteria and viruses that are being discharged to the system. So that's one tank integrity issue. The other tank integrity issue that we find quite a bit is back before septic tank or septic system regulations came about in the early 70s, a lot of the septic systems in the 50s and 60s were designed with tanks that didn't have bottoms. So the tanks were not watertight. And that accomplished the first item that a septic system provides, which is disposal, but it doesn't provide any treatment. Because the septic tank effluent is gonna leave the tank, and again, create this area underneath the tank that is heavily saturated, and when you have saturated soil, you're not getting any treatment. Therefore, the effluent that's leaving the tank isn't treated before it hits the groundwater. So that's item number one on a compliance inspection. Item number two is what we call soil separation. What you'll hear a lot of times what the professionals, the, the term that they'll use is vertical separation. What, what that is, is the distance between the bottom of the system and any type of restriction. Most often it's, it's water table. Okay, so here's an example of a soil profile. A typical soil profile in Minnesota where we have topsoil, a thick topsoil layer followed by a subsoil layer. And eventually you can see a pretty obvious uh, change in color down at the bottom of this soil pit where we have uh, gray soils, which is an indicator of saturated soil conditions. So this is a very obvious example of saturated soil conditions. Now in this case, you can see with this tape that I have here, we have saturated soil conditions at some point in the year at 36 inches below gray. So as a septic designer and a septic inspector, we would note that 36 inches is the depth to restriction. And since we need 36 inches, 36 inches of vertical separation between a restriction and the bottom of the system, that tells us where we can put this system. In this particular soil profile, we could design what we call an at grade, where we put the rock directly on the surface of the, so of the soil and then mound it a little bit after that to provide it some uh, um, support. Let's imagine for a second that this system, this drain field, was installed 24 inches below the surface. So the depth of the system is 24 inches. Now, if the compliance inspector does a soil observation and determines that there's water table due to the presence of soil modeling, which you saw earlier in the video, if he or she sees that, he's, he or she is gonna make a, uh, a depth measurement. And let's imagine for a second that we find water table at 60 inches below grade. Now, the distance between the bottom of this system and the water table in this scenario is 36 inches. 
The state of Minnesota requires that a compliant septic system have at least 36 inches of separation between the bottom of the system and the water table. So if this were the case, this system would be deemed compliant. Because all of the effluent from the septic tank that goes out to the drain field has enough distance between the system and the water table to get ample treatment before it gets discharged to the groundwater. Now let's look at some different numbers in this same scenario. So the system is still 24 inches from grade. The compliance inspector goes out, conducts a soil observation, and determines that there's water table at 48 inches. Now, doing the math, 48 minus 24, we have 24 inches of vertical separation. So now this system, if this were the case, would be deemed non-compliant. It would also be called a failing system because the system is failing to protect groundwater. Because as the effluent leaves the drain field, there's not enough contact time between when the, when the effluent leaves the bottom of the drain field and the water table, and you'll get untreated sewage getting into the groundwater, contaminating the groundwater, and could eventually end up in someone's drinking water well and could get somebody sick. This is the most common restriction you'll find in an existing septic system inspection. Uh, otherwise, uh, they often will look for bedrock or uh, rock fragments. If there's a lot of gravel in the system, that would also be considered a restriction that the compliance inspector, inspector would look after.